Okay, so to start a new Python project, we generally use uh, Poetry and Git. You can install them by referring to their official documentation. We'll add the links below in description. Uh, we use Poetry as a package manager. Basically, a package manager in short is uh, something that lets you manage all your dependencies for a project and also provides a basic scaffolding for your project. Okay, so to start, you should you need a project structure, and for that as well, Poetry gives you a command called as start Poetry new, and just give the name of your project. So we'll do hello, and this will create a directory called as hello. You can cd into hello, and then if you check the project structure, you can see that it's very basic. It only has few files in it. To the note here is the uh, file which is named as pyproject.toml. This is the main file which provides uh, all the orchestration for your project. Here you can see there are different sections. Uh, first section provides you with basic config options such as version name, etc. And the main uh, sections to note here are the poetry.dependencies and poetry.dev-dependencies. These are the two sections where you specify your uh, project dependencies. And we generally avoid manually editing these uh, sections and we also advise the same because Poetry does give you different command line options to add or edit these sections. Okay, so uh, before adding our dependencies into it, we want to make sure that we don't edit or change our main installation of Python. So for that, uh, we generally create a virtual environment. So for, to do that, you have a library in your standard uh, library of Python. So it's called venv and then you just use it like this. You have to call python minus m venv and then give the name for your virtual environment. So we'll just general, we use it as a practice to name it as dot venv. Yeah, the dot is not necessary. You can give it without the dot as well, but yeah. just as a just that it will be hidden so you don't see it if you because yeah. it's not of uh, any use for editing purpose so do, to to start that environment to start using that environment you have to first act activate it so you'd say source dot vnv the name of your virtual environment then bin and then slash activate so as you can see on the left side uh, it is activated now and if you want to you see you can do which as well yeah. Yeah. Which shows this shows which Python you are using. So it is pointing to our virtual environment version of Python. Okay. And now we'll use poetry to add our dependencies. Suppose our hello project needs to use requests, Python requests package. So all we have to do is say poetry add, and then the name of the dependency that you want to add. So in this case, it's requests. Uh, one thing to notice is that you can give a version as well uh, like something like this version 1.2 or whatever version you want or you can just skip it to take the latest version you can also add yeah. multiple packages by uh, just giving name uh, with the space in between so i'll just add tomal kit maybe and if you yeah. do that it will take some time to resolve yeah. those dependencies and generally it is uh, very quick as you can see, it's installing the dependencies required by requests and Tomal kit. So it will take care of yep. all the versions and uh, the versions will not clash in between. All right. Yep. Now that we have installed it, uh, if you want to know what are your dependencies for these projects. So again, the Pi project Tomal comes into picture. And yep. like here again, you can see that inside the dependencies, it has added two packages named as requests and Tomal kit. And also it has specified its version that it has installed, which is 2.25 for requests. And if you see the caret sign above, it tells that uh, take requests version, which is between two and three. This is a syntax that Poetry uses. And also the same for Tomal kit. Yep. And the part below you see is a dev dependency. Here you can already see that PyTest is uh, installed as a dev dependency. Let's just install another uh, dev dependency and then we'll come back to what exactly is a dev dependency. Yep. So uh, generally dev dependencies, uh, suppose you want to have a formatter. You are using black as your Python formatter. So you can add them 
by saying minus minus dev and then the name of the package in this case it's black i'll just add it so what happens is that it's keeping the dev dependency and the main dependency separate because uh, for the working of your project or to run your project you don't need this dev dependencies just for development purpose so that is why it is keeping it separate that's why the name is also dev dependencies it specifies yeah. that it's only for development purpose yep. as you can see it's installed now and if we check the pyproject.toml file we can see that black has been added here uh, yep all right uh, one more thing now uh, once we add the packages you if you check your directory you'll see a new file called as poetry.lock and this has this is a big like a it will always be a big file it keeps all the versions of all the dependencies of your dependencies so, so because uh, for example atomic rights and etc uh, these are required by requests or black or whatever it will keep all the versions uh, in this lock file so that it doesn't have to resolve it each and every time yep also uh, if you go back to pyproject.toml file you see that uh there was already pytests uh, added as a dev dependency so poetry can also be used to run your tests and also run other scripts and that's how poetry helps you with your project management and that's why we use poetry next and the most important thing that we always use in all our projects is git Git is basically a version control system, and a version control system is something that uh, lets you uh, track changes in files or set of files over a time, and also lets you revisit them whenever you want. Uh, so you don't have to keep copies of your projects in different folders or different places with different names, and you don't have to do it manually. Git handles it all for you. Okay, so to actually use Git in our project, uh, we have to initialize it. So to initialize, Git provides us a command called as Git init, and we have to run this from inside our directory, which is hello, in our case. And if we run that, it will create a folder called as dot Git, and this will be this will this folder will con contain all our versions and uh, changes, etc. Uh, you don't have to worry much about it. You just have to use the commands that give Git gives you. So we have initialized our repository, and now we can check its status by running the command status. And this shows us the files that have changed, that have been added, or that are new, or that have not been started to track. So we can but track here, this file. Yeah. Yep. But here you can see that uh, there is a folder called as dot vnv, which is the virtual environment that we created, and we don't want to track. our virtual environment uh, with our project it is uh, specific to a uh, per, uh, particular in environment so we don't want to track that file yep and we, that's yep. yep we only want to the, track the files that we make changes to or the that are uh, relevant to our project itself yep and to do that git provides us with something called as git ignore so we have to create a file named as git dot git ignore Yep. where we can mention whatever we don't want to track or whatever we want to tell git that please don't track all this yep. so here we will add dot venv slash so it being a folder we have to give slash so we'll ignore this what what git will do is that it will ignore this uh, ignore any changes to this folder or any deletion addition or anything that happens to yep. this folder uh, additionally we can even add uh, things like which we don't want to track like in python you get this underscore underscore pycache folder pycache yep uh you even get pyc wild files wild characters so can we add. can use wild characters as well so star means any anything with anything with that ends with uh, dot .pyc dot .pyc yep. so we'll ignore we'll save this file sorry uh we'll save this file and now if we check the status again Latest. You can see that dot vnv is not there anymore. Uh, we okay. get a new file dot ignore. You have to dot get ignore. You have to track that as well. You have to add it into your repository. So now yep. uh, we can see that we we need these files and we want to uh, we want to track it. So git has a command called as add. Um, add. You can add individual files like this. Git ignore. You can just give the name. Uh, 
and then pass names to it be separated yep. yep or if you want to track all of them that are shown in the status you just say git add dot and this will add all the files which are shown here not the ones which are not shown here okay so i'll run yep. git add dot dot means the current directory so everything inside current directory will be added to track yep now if i run status you can see that it has uh, added these files all the files which were shown inside in the previous uh, command and it is saying that these changes are ready to be committed so we can now create a checkpoint or a version that we want so we will just commit these changes you can give a message and you can give any message we just this, since this is the first commit we just say initial commit initial and then commit. save it so now a checkpoint has been created with git and uh, you can we see that can also check yep you can see that using git log so uh, this is how you can use git uh, also now you, you want to push if you can push it to a central repository like gitlab or github so you just have to use push and you have to set uh, your url and etc using the configuration basically a central repository is necessary if you want to collaborate with your friend or other colleagues so yep. that all of them can work together on a project and that's the basically basically that's why we need git if we want to collaborate with a larger set of people yep now once suppose you have pushed it into gitlab or github or anything now if your friend or your colleague wants to um collaborate with you he can just do git clone and the url of that uh, repository and once he is done that he can go into the directory of the project and run poetry install install and what this will do is it will take the contents from poetry.log and install the exact versions that are mentioned here so he will have the exact same environment as you and then you can start to work yep hope you liked our video as we just went through the basics of git and poetry if you need detailed videos on any of these do let us know in the comments below don't forget to like share and subscribe